Hey, it's a great day. I'm Mike Current, Energizer, and in this video, I'm going to talk about my training program to get ready for my Continental Divide Trail through hike. So let's do this. For most people, a through hike will be the most physically demanding thing they do in their entire lives. It isn't for me. I mean, I, I, I've done things harder than a through hike in my life. Um, but because of that, and because I've done a through hike, uh, two of them now, I know that training for one is especially important to get ready for the rigors of the hike. I am a firm believer that a person can come to the trail with their trail legs. I think I've done it both on the Pacific Crest Trail on in the Appalachian Trail. We'll see if I'm able to do that on the Continental Divide Trail. But even if a person doesn't, even if they don't arrive at the trail with their full trail legs, they can at least narrow the distance, that adjustment period between sitting on a couch and able to, to, to hike, you know, day after day after day, putting in 20 mile a days. If you're down here and you're sitting on a couch and you go, hey, I wanna go on a through hike, and this is where you're gonna be a couple months into the trail, well, you know, show up, shorten that distance. Give yourself the opportunity of being successful. Remember, only 25% of those who start a through hike finish the through hike. 75% either fail or quit. And most of those, it happens in those first, you know, five, 600 miles. Now there are four areas that an individual should work on. And this is not just in through hiking. It's if you're sitting at home and you're watching it, it's like, ah, I'm not going to do a through hike for a number of years, or you might not ever do one. But these are four areas you should work on in just in your daily fitness program to increase your overall longevity in life and your quality of life during those years. And those four areas are VO max, cardio endurance, strength, and stability. Now VO max is the maximum amount of oxygen the body can use while exercising. And, and this goes beyond just, you know, lung capacity. People are oh, just bigger lungs. No, how efficiently are those lungs at getting, you know, the, the, the oxygen out of them and into the blood? How efficient is the heart and, and the cardiovascular system and getting that oxygen down to the muscles and then absorbed into the muscles? VO max is the difference between a through hiker getting up the hill out of breath we're not feeling it. The second one is cardio endurance. Now that's the ability of the heart and the lungs and all that to work over an extended period of time. Now strength is increasing muscle mass. Now most people will think of, yeah, going to the gym, lifting weights, making the muscles bigger. You know, they absorb more, they, they, you know, they just incredibly, they, they do so much for your body. Unfortunately, as we get older, we have a propensity to lose muscle mass, especially in my age. But maintaining that muscle mass goes beyond just going to a gym. If you're a through hiker, you put a real heavy weight, you know, rucksack on and start hiking, start putting miles on the legs. That increases muscles. When you increase your muscle mass, you are less prone to muscle fatigue. You also, when you're doing that weight training or that ruck marching, you're also increasing the strength of your tendons and ligaments. You're also promoting bone density, so you're less susceptible to stress fractures. And the last one is stability. That's working those ancillary muscles, those secondary muscles that just essentially help keep us upright, help catch us if we were to fall or lose our balance. If you are getting ready for a through hike, it's not just putting a ruck on and walking around. It isn't. You work on all four areas to increase your ability 
for that through hike. VO max, cardio endurance, strength, and stability. Now I use a three day training cycle in order to get ready for my through hike. Now day one is for running. Most of that time is zone two running, just steady paced running. And what is zone two? We can go into a lot of definitions of what zone two is, but essentially what it is, is you're running at a pace that if someone were next to you, you could carry on a conversation with them. You'll have difficulty with it, but you can still carry on a conversation. For example, today, before I started making this video, I went on a zone two run, about 12 miles. Uh, I'm in Coronado near San Diego. And so I went up around the north side of uh, Coronado and did a zone two run. Uh, and for my Navy and brothers and sisters, I'm right next to Bud's. So yeah, when I, when I was heading up north this morning, um, yeah, had some students um, uh, on the other side of the road. Um, they were looking good. And, and they, and of course, passed me, but they were on the other side of the road. And then by the time I got up around and then coming back down the, uh, the other side, uh, likely those same students were out by Hotel Del Coronado um, doing some swimming. Um, so that was pretty motivating to me, to me. But that's what I did this morning. Today was a 12 mile zone two run. And for me, that's what I do is I'll spend one or two hours running on that first day. But it's not all zone two. The other thing I will do is interval training. And interval training gets to the VO max part of that. And what you do there is, I'll just say, hey, four minutes, I'm gonna run to where I'm pretty uncomfortable, but I'm gonna run at that pace to where I can maintain it for four minutes. And then I'll take about four minutes of rest get down to a very slow pace where I can recover. And then I'll go at it again. And then I'll go at it again. And maybe do that four or five times. Get a good warm up before that, do the intervals, and then do a cool down, nice slow run to get done with. But I'm working on that VO max. And if the four minute interval doesn't work, maybe it's a two minute interval. Or maybe it's just, you know, fortunately where I'm at, um, there's a track right next to it. I think it's used by the Navy base and the local runners, but uh, part of the running path, it's, it's divided up into quarter mile increments. So I can just say, hey, today I'm gonna run pretty hard for a quarter mile, and then I'm gonna run real easy for a quarter mile. Then I'm gonna run really hard for a quarter mile, then run easy. Or I'm gonna run really hard for a half mile, and then I'm gonna run easy. So I'll break it up. But the idea is I'm gonna make myself uncomfortable to get that VO max, get that maximum up, and then I'm gonna recover and I'm gonna do it again. You know, to be honest, the hardest part of my training program is my VO max training, doing the run intervals. Uh, not only because, yeah, they kind of take a little bit out of me, but also, you know, at my age, I feel kind of silly <laughs> trying, to, trying to run hard you know, stretch it out, that sort of thing. And so, yeah, I just try to capture that, that inner child, you know, playing on the playground and, and um, yeah, make the, make the best of it. Cause I know the VO max is so critical to everything I'm gonna be doing while I'm through hiking. So that's day one. Day two, I put on the rucksack. <clears throat> now I have a training rucksack. It has over 40 pounds of just stuff in it, dead weight. Nothing special, just one of more than 40 pounds in it. Look, I hope to never carry on the Continental Divide Trail 40 pounds in the ruck. In fact, I hope rarely does my pack ever get above 30 pounds. But if I'm training, I want that extra weight. I want to blow out my legs. And so I'll put on that you know, 40 plus pound rucksack and I will go out walking for four to six hours. And when I walk, it's not like when you're on the trail, you might walk for an hour or two and take a break, look around, that sort of thing, take the rucksack off, get something to drink. No, 
When I'm training, I put on the rucksack and I go. Four hours, six to six hours, I go. I do not stop. I want the legs hurting by the time I get back to the house. Now, part of that rucking is if it's on uneven terrain, like if I'm walking on the beach or I'm hiking on a trail, um, I'm also working on my stability muscles when I'm doing that. So I count that as stability training. Now on day three of my training program, I go to the gym. I lift weights. I'll do about 10 exercises, uh, five um, sets of be uh, between eight to 12 repetitions. Trying to burn out the muscles. I want it to hurt by the end of that last set. I want to feel fatigued on every single exercise that I do. I'm trying to build up that muscle mass. That's what I'm trying to do. And if I don't think I've done enough stability exercises, I will add them in. Either, you know, the squats or the side leg raises, something like that. I'll put that in there. After I'm done with the third day, I just repeat the cycle. I start back at day one, day two, day three, day one, day two, day three. When do I rest? When my body says it needs a rest. Sometimes that's five days. Sometimes that's 10 days. Sometimes that's two weeks. I allow my body to tell me, hey, Mike, you need to take a day to recover so you can build up your muscles. Just like on the trail, I also get some bonus miles in. Because I'm on vacation and my wife's with me, I might go training for, you know, one or two hours in the morning and sometimes four to six hours. Um, but then when I get back, she's wanting to go. And so I'll get with her and we'll go on a five mile hike or a five mile walk someplace, or we'll get on the bikes and, you know, we'll ride the bikes for 10 to 15 miles. I am not suggesting that you adopt my training program. This is a training program for all three riders. No, I'm not saying that. If there's something I've said that you think, hey, that's a good idea, and I'm gonna incorporate that at my training program, I recommend that you do that. Um, but you don't have to adapt my old training program. It works for me. But if you are considering training four years through hike, which I do highly recommend, I first recommend you go see a doctor, get a clean bill of health from your doctor, and and then develop a training program either through listening to videos like this or talking to a trainer or talking to a physical therapist to get you on a progressive level to where you're slowly building yourself up injury free before you get on the trail for your through hike hey i'm still getting ready for my hike uh, i'm still training for it like i said i did 12 mile run today I'll be out with the, uh, the rucksack tomorrow, and then I'll be at the gym the next day, and I'm going to keep at it and keep at it and keep at it. I'm going to arrive at the trail mentally and physically prepared to take on the Continental Divide Trail. It's going to be good. Starting 1 May. See you next time. Yeah.